Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to use Heroic Games Launcher on Linux. Heroic Games Launcher is specifically made so that we can launch Epic Games, GOG Games, and our Amazon Games. It is another wine manager. In videos previous, I covered how to install games outside of Steam using Lutris, and these were also included. However, this application is tailor-made exactly for these game stores. So we're going to dive into it real quick. I have here an instance of Linux Mint. The first thing I'm going to do is open up our software manager. However, if you're comfortable using the command line, you can also get the application from there as well. We'll type heroic in the search box, and we're going to go ahead and get this flat pack application installed. Once heroic is done downloading, we can go ahead and launch it from here. We'll go ahead and maximize it and you're greeted initially with the change log. Now, if you're new to this, you can just go ahead and close it off. But if you're returning and you want to see what's changed, go ahead and look through it. This next screen asks if we want to send anonymous analytics. This is completely up to you. I'm going to go ahead and disable this for now. The first thing we're greeted with is an empty library. It's letting us know that we could click here to log into our accounts. So I'm going to go ahead and click here. And here we have the option to log in to Epic Games, GOG, and Amazon Login. Before I go ahead and log into anything, I want to take care of a few things. Let's head over to our Wine Manager. It appears that it's gone ahead and downloaded GE Proton Latest, which is what I was going to go ahead and make sure that we had. So it's great that it already went ahead and got it for us. Next, we'll double check in our settings under game defaults that is going to use that one first and it looks like it is under general we could just take a look at a few things here from here you could change your applications language i'm going to stay with english you could change your theme here i like the zombie theme the default installation path is where it's going to install the games and prefixes so i'm fine with the default location if you have a separate hard drive mounted, you can easily find it under your mount partition. You would go to other locations, computer, MNT, and you would find it here. Granted, if you mounted it properly. Alternatively, you can change the location for the prefixes as well. I like to keep them together. If you have any custom wine or proton paths outside of this application, you can go ahead and let it know where it is here. By clicking on the plus button, you can add the new path of where your custom proton is located. If you already have an installed version of Epic Game Store that you may have done through an application like Lutris, then you can sync the prefix here. Just find where the prefix is and let it know where it is and you can have all of that data synced up. And then we have a bunch of other settings that we can turn on here. I personally like to turn on automatically update games. I won't want it to show me change logs at startup. If you want it to exit to the system tray, you can do this. If you hit X on the top right side, it'll stay in the tray for you here. Or you can double click and bring it back. Many other things here too. You can add desktop shortcuts automatically so that this way you can have the game linked to your desktop. You can add games to Steam automatically as well. This way you can just use Steam to launch them. We're gonna go ahead and enable Discord rich presence. In my experience, this doesn't work very well, but we're just gonna turn it on anyway. One of the last things on this menu, it lets us know what do you wanna see at the top of our library. You can have it disabled, or you can show it your recently played games or the ones recently played that are currently installed. You also have your favorite games displayed up top as well. I'll leave this disabled for now, as typically the installed games are shown up top first. Within the advanced tab, I like to scroll down and we can install the EOS overlay. This is the Epic Online service and you're gonna need to do this for certain games. I like to go ahead and just install it. And while that's installing, one of the last few things to look at in the advanced tab, you actually have the option if you mess up something, to reset heroic. But this is a great option to have here. Everything else is just system information here. These are just logs. And there's not much to that. I'm gonna go ahead and quickly log into these and show you around. All right, so once you logged in, your login screen should look something like this. I went ahead and logged into Epic Games and GOG. Not doing an Amazon login for this one. We head over to our library and this is where we can see all of our games in the list. If you wanted to see specific stores you'll come up to the filters and you can untoggle epic games and here on this new account that i made i went ahead and got two games on gog just so that we could go ahead and demonstrate this difference and then we could toggle back epic games 
As you can see, I'm a Thursday collector, so I have a bunch of free Epic Games here. What I'll go ahead and do is install a game so that you can see how it functions. We're going to select Absolute Drift. It's actually a pretty cool game. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the download button. From there, we're greeted with this other window that's going to allow us to change the location of where we want this game installed. But since I want it installed right where it is, I'll keep this information as it is. And we'll go ahead and show wine settings here. I want it to use the latest GE Proton. So from here, I'm ready to say install. Installation has started. If we want to check our progress, we'll click over on downloads. And we'll see that our game is downloading 100% and it's already complete. Very small game, so it installs really quick. From here, we can actually launch the game. We can also head back to our library and see that it's the first one out of all the games because it's actually installed and it actually has some color to the portrait. If we need to make any further changes, then we can go into the settings here and just look around and see what we need to change. Everything here looks fine. We can always look into the others. And if we wanted to enable Mango HUD, we can do that from here as well. You just need to make sure that Mango HUD is installed for you. And in this instance, we actually need Mango HUD installed on Flatpak since we installed this as a Flatpak. So if you absolutely need to use this, I'll go ahead and show you how to do it on Linux Mint. We'll open up our terminal and we'll type Flatpak install Mango HUD. And when you hit enter, it's going to look for remotes with the word Mango HUD in it. I typically like to use 2408. Always try to use the latest ones. But sometimes if that doesn't work for you, we'll have to come back and get a different one like 2308 or 2208. It will be a process of elimination if you happen to run into a scenario where it doesn't work for you. We'll go ahead and press six. In order for that to take effect, we'll have to close Heroic Games Launcher and reopen it. And we'll get back into the settings and we can enable the toggle box. An important thing to mention here is that if you go ahead and click play on the game and the game just flat out just does not start, a lot of times it could be because of Mango HUD not allowing the game to start. So you may want to toggle this if you ever run into that scenario. If games have Battle Eye or Easy Antique Sheet, you always want to come here and make sure these are toggled on. Under the Advanced tab, we have options here to enter game arguments. So we can put launch arguments here. If you don't understand what this is, you can just simply click the help button here and it says use the game arguments to be called after the launch command. For instance, no launcher to skip the launcher in some games. You can typically find some of these commands that you may want to use if you use a resource like the PC Gaming Wiki. Additionally, we can also enter environmental variables here. So if you were using OBS VK Capture, I would enter OBS VK Capture here and then one on this side. Now, as far as cloud saves sync, this feature is in beta. So it asks that we back up our saves before syncing, just in case anything could go wrong. Our last tab here would be game scope. Again, this is another thing that we can install the same way we did for Mango HUD. Being that it's a Flatpak application, we'll just go into our command line and say Flatpak install game scope. And it'll be numbered the same way as we saw Mango HUD. I like to pick the latest version. But if the latest version doesn't work for you, you're going to have to mix and match. From here, go ahead and click play. Alright, so that about does it for Heroic Games Launcher. This is pretty simple and straightforward. This launcher does also have the ability to add other games if you hit the add game button here. However, this is not my preference. I would not use this to install another game. I would typically use Lutris myself, but this is not to deter you from doing it. If you need to do it this way, you can do it through here. If you have a game or anything that you want to install, for instance, something like Battle.net, we can simply type in the name of the game or the application, click Run Installer first, find the application, immediately it should start running the installer. So there you have it. This is Heroic Games Launcher. It's pretty straightforward. It's very easy to manage. 
you can easily get it from Flatpak. I always recommend that you get it from your system sources for better integration with the system. But yeah, this is it. All right, so if you found this helpful, don't forget to give the video a like, subscribe for more. I want to thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.